Okay, this is my third time doing this because I kept on the last time I had the mute button on and didn't capture my whole kind of lecture. So here it is. I'm starting off with the head. I'm using really loose action lines to give it a fluid kind of movement. The head is the first is the most important object in these character illustrations, so I'm going to spend a lot of time on it on placing it. I mean, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but I'm just going to I'm going to spend time more time than I would on the rest of the illustration. Cuz the head will be subject to change, but for right now I'm just concentrating on uh making the head a little bit more detailed than the rest and then everything else falling in line with the head. And I'm making these quick kind of um, action strokes here. Just to kind of give it a just to kind of give it a sense of movement. Now again, I'm going to be doing a lot of drawing through my objects. I'm going to be drawing the arms and the torso and uh, around the head as, uh, as kind of cylinders and rectangles. Just kind of simplify the anatomy. Because I already know a lot of anatomy, so all it is is just me simplifying the shapes that I put down into anatomy. And you just get that out of, uh, out of experience. It'll happen. Now we get into the time lapse version of this. The first minute was a was real time. Now we speed up. Again, I'm spending more time on that head, especially the eyes. The head's the centerpiece of the illustration. The eyes are the centerpiece of the head. And since she's a badass assassin, like one of my viewers asked me to uh, illustrate. She's gonna have two swords. She's gonna have a huge rack. So, uh, as to distract her opponents. And to give me something interesting to draw. But yeah, that the rack's gonna get bigger, don't worry. Now I'm getting more into the whole illustration. From this it's really helpful to, to pan out every ten seconds, just so you You'll be drawing the illustration as a whole. You don't spend too much time zoomed in. And then when when you zoom out, it gets all it just falls apart. It's very healthy to draw from this angle a lot. I'm adding a little bit of definition to her torso and her arm just because of the way she's contorted and how she's holding that sword you know, you want to curl her arm a little her arm muscle a little it's not relaxed yeah, I'm giving her somebody to kill but, you know, that's not going to last um, just because of this just looking, just looking ahead in this illustration, um, it just doesn't kind of mesh, and those legs just don't seem to work out. So I'm just going to crop them out. Now, very rarely do you ever need to show the feet in a final illustration. It kind of just gives this. If you show your feet too much, I mean, it's not like it's not important to draw feet because. It is when it's called for, but if you draw too much of the, um, the lower part of the legs, it kind of gives gives your character a sense of smallness and scale. And, you, know, you don't want that for somebody that you're trying to, for some character that you're trying to like pose in a very dynamic way. It also makes her look stiff. So leaving the feet out of the illustration kind of gives the viewer a little bit of a a little bit of a wonder as to you know, what she's doing and it keeps it interesting, let's say that. Every once in a while I'll have an illustration where I do draw the whole figure but 
it's always healthy just to to crop something out. You know, if I if I um, put her feet in there, I would probably crop out the top of her head or one of her arms. Every once in a while, it's cool to draw the whole body. And you're going to want to do that for, like, class projects and uh, character design elements. I'm going to do another illustration of Vern. Because this is kind of a character that I want to I wanna make a comic book out of. It just kind of got that way. I call her Lilith. It is in direct comparison to my Eve sketch. But Lilith just seems, to me, she just seems like a, a brunette with black dangerous hair. But yeah, with that in mind, I'm going to I'm going to do the rest of the illustration. What somebody named Lilith would look like and how they would stand. Again, her arms are very muscular because she's a badass assassin and uh she's holding a sword. And these swords aren't easy to they're not light. And I'm drawing an owl here because it just gives Something random like that just gives her that sense of uh, that sense of character. It's really got nothing to do with being an assassin. Maybe I can make a story out of it, like the owl is her totem animal, and this is all in her head. The owl is all in her head, and it talks to her. So she's a crazy assassin. But I do have a. I am going through a phase where I like drawing birds and and owls this week, so this is just. A little excuse to put that in in an illustration that I'm doing. Again, I don't know what kind of owl this is. I just saw I just saw this picture on the internet, and I, I decided to use it for reference. It's on my other screen. Can't see it right now, but that's where I put it. And I don't even know what those wings on top of his head are for. I just saw it, and I thought it looked friggin' cool. Yeah. It kind of brings a another design element to that, that top part of the design. You know, I'm gonna make the I'm gonna put a lot of background with her with her and I'm gonna I'm gonna isolate that owl. Or most notably that, that top part of the design. And here, what you'll see in a minute and you'll notice that um I'm going to paint this in a very different way than I've done uh, the rest of my in the rest of my thing. I'm just going to I'm going to value paint her first. So, I'm going to paint everything by values and clean up everything by values. And it's going to make for a cleaner, nicer illustration. I'm not going to be fiddling around with a million different colors on a million different colors on her arms and on this owl trying to get rid of those lines I'm just gonna fiddle around with nine values which is pretty much what this is painted in uh, one through nine one being the the white in the background you're gonna see in a minute and nine being the black of her boots here I'm putting that dead body I'm gonna put a decapitated kind of uh, form to it Yeah, this value painting that you're seeing right here, I learned that from Zia Tapatera, uh, who I've kind of sort of adopted as a, a teacher and influence of mine. He runs a website called idrawgirls.com, and he has tutorial videos out, and I learned a majority of what I know just watching his tutorial videos. See, it just makes it so much easier to, like, just suggest anatomy with just value drawing and value sketching. I don't have to fiddle with all these colors and hues and temperature. I could just pay attention to the value and then later on I'll bleed the value I'll bleed the color in. Here are these indents just standing straight up. She's gonna have Gonna have some really defined muscle and leg muscles that are holding her up. 
There's a good sort of balance there. And there's there's a certain roundness to the muscles in her in her uh, in her upper arm because of the way she's holding that sword. Her arm is curled. So her muscles should be curled. And she's also leaning back, so you see a lot of her rib cage getting kind of shown out. And this owl has to be a little dark because just to contrast with the, uh, the likeness I'm going to put on it later. I'll put around it later. Rather. But here's my, um, right now I'm using a, uh, a brush I like to call my feather brush just because that's all I did is I I, I photoshopped the feather in a, a, a photograph of a feather into Photoshop I grayscaled it and I uh, I just captured that brush and I manipulated it and I use it for a lot of drawing I use it for a lot of uh, value shapes too very easy way to put to put uh, edges on there that you would normally get from a round brush back to my round brush which I I do suggest drawing in most of the time right now I just gotta concentrate on my grayscale and I'm drawing everything in shapes see when I'm drawing that boot I'm drawing I'm just drawing it as a, a value shape I'm not concerned with drawing a boot when I'm, draw when I'm coloring in the hair I'm shading in the hair I'm not concerned with the individual strands of the hair. I'm just concerned with drawing a black shape that resembles hair onto her. And you're going to see that in a minute. Now, the, now here I'm just drawing um, background. And I, rec I recommend the trick to background is having it be soft. You know, my soft brush I'm going to use for the background. My harder brushes I'm going to use for the foreground. Just because I'm trying to practice backgrounds, I'm trying to get better at backgrounds because they are my, my weak spot. But when you use a soft brush like I did there, you just kind of hint at a background. That's all you need to do with character illustrations. Just give it some kind of environment where she is trying to draw her in a, in a post-apocalyptic kind of cityscape so I'm drawing buildings there and giving the uh, impression of tops of buildings and a light source coming from up top because this is in the daytime and hopefully this value sketching and all this stuff will just give the finished illustration more of an epic feel now I haven't finished it yet um, between this and my next video I'm just gonna be doing a lot more of this I'm gonna be doing a lot a lot of cleaning up, a lot of um, keeping it simple like this. I'm I'm just keeping it simple as a value shape. I'm gonna I'm gonna paint the hair along with that bracelet in the back as one shape because the strength of an illustration is in how you manipulate the black as blacks because that very much anchors the illustration. The white as white will kind of tell tell the viewer where to look and where to go, but subconsciously. You know, the darker values, especially the blackest black, uh, it will anchor the it will anchor the viewer. And that's what you want to keep in mind when you're doing these kind of finished illustrations. Again, I'm trying to put more character into her into her bra there. Try to make it a little reflective. And I will see you in the next um, in the next thing where I will start laying down color. I promise. All right, thank you.